Hello everyone, Daydon back again with episode 4 of my blind long play let's play of Zero Escape, Virtue's Last Reward. Um, as stated in the comments of my last video, sorry for the delay on the upload. There were some technical difficulties when I was trying to uh, compile it, and that kind of led to a delay. Um, like I said, I will be trying to push these out in a little bit faster fashion just to make up for it. I was going to try to do one a couple days after that, but my voice kind of gave out and I had a cough that would have not made for pleasant recording. Don't know if you can hear it, but my voice is still a little scratchy right now. Still, I think we are good enough to continue, and I will see about pushing these out a little bit faster, at least for the um, next, like this one and the next one. So, in the meantime, let's keep going. As Fi and I stepped out of the AB room, I could see the others running toward the projection, shoving and pushing to get closer. What the hell were you thinking? I was thinking that I wanted to mess with you, strange white-haired woman. Did you hear anything I said? Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I was, and yeah, I did. Then? Well, I... I want to believe in Alice. It's not really a rational decision. No, but you said it was the right one. I heard it. I heard it from your very lips. I know. Yo, what's up? What's up? I miss those commercials. Budweiser had some good commercials back in the day. Siggy! Sup? Hey, what are you kids doing over there? Arguing. We're about to announce the results. Yeah. Let's go. Away! We'll find out if you made the right choice. Yeah, well, I mean, at worst we're down to, uh, I mean, if we got betrayed, then at worst we're down to one. Which means we're not dead yet. <laughs> Alright. Good, good, good. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you're all here. Finally. Let's get ready to rock! Oh, yeah. <laughs> Round one! Fight! The results! If everybody would please direct their eyes to this monitor. <laughs> oh no! Uh, well, we're screwed. But yay, Alice. Go, Alice. Alice and Clover will make it out of this. Makes sense that they would betray one they don't particularly like, Ten Mioldi. Uh, great, I've got, he's got me saying Ten Mioldi. Um, but Kay is also very analytical and possibly a robot. Probably a robot, honestly. So that makes sense. Dio and Quark. Yeah, Quark probably persuaded Dio not to betray. And Luna's so nice that she'd ally. And Alice, I hate you. Here are the results from your game. Now, let us check the numbers on our bracelets. Hey! Alice, what the hell is this? Excuse me? I just made the most rational choice. Yeah, like my choice of not wearing a shirt. The best way to minimize risk and maximize reward in this situation is to choose betray. Anyone who thinks otherwise is, well, an idiot. Hey, why? Why did you do it? I could ask you the same question. Why did you do something as stupid as choose ally? Why? Haven't you heard of the prisoner's dilemma? The best solution is for all of us to choose ally. Oh really? All of us, huh? Kay and Clover chose betray too, you know. Uh. Yes. I know about the prisoner's dilemma. But everyone picking ally isn't a reasonable outcome. Just look at the results for this round. What do they tell you? You're a pretty tender-hearted guy to trust somebody you've just met. 
Well, maybe tender-headed would be a little more appropriate in this case. Zing. <laughs> what? Oh, was that upsetting? Alice, you're kind of a jerk. My apologies. I'm only trying to warn you. Alice is right. You made a stupid choice. And thanks to you, our BP is down to one now. God damn it. I set my jaw and stomped away from Alice and Fi. My hands had balled themselves into fists, but my throat was tight and my eyes stung. Why? Why had she done it? Cork, Dio, and Luna's group, on the other hand, seemed calm, almost happy. Thank you. I'm so happy you chose Ally. Uh, no problem. <laughs> Well, to tell you the truth, Mr. Dio wanted to pick Betray. I was totally right. What? Uh, hey! Mr. Dio told me to pick Betray so that we could get three points. He said we could escape together. If we betrayed you, then we'd have six BP. And then, if we betrayed someone in the next round, we'd have nine. Oh, Dio, is this true? No, th that's not what happened at all. Dio, you liar. Kidding! <laughs> I lied. Wow, Quark. Jeez. That was a joke. <laughs> Kid, you're terrible at joking. Get the cinder blocks off your head and learn some humor. Mr. Dio would never do something like that. It was a joke? It was a terrible one. Seriously. Yeah. Man, you, you really had me going there. <laughs> <laughs> I really surprised you, huh? So you really were planning to choose Ally all along? Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, now I don't know which one is actually telling the truth. Well done, game. Don't worry about it. We only did what anybody else would do. <laughs> right, Mr. Dio? Uh, yeah. Exactly. I understand. I guess I just haven't had enough time to earn your trust, huh? Um, I suppose you could say that. I just didn't really expect you to be so nice about it. It looked like there had been some sort of argument between Kay, Clover, and Ten Miolgi. Dang it! Dang it, Zero. Between Kay, Clover, and Ten Miolgi. Although whatever it was seemed to have resolved itself amicably. Zero, when does the next round start? What makes you think we'll be having another round? Well, you said round one. <laughs> if there's a round one, then there's likely a round two. Besides, didn't you say the goal of the AB game was to get 9 BP? That's impossible without a second round. True. Oh, yeah. I guess you got a point. You're right. There will be a second round. When? I don't know. <laughs> Why not? The voting happens when an A-B gate opens. Um, they're already open. <laughs> right you are. So, let me just close them. Aww. The Abijex gates have closed. Round two of the Abijex game will be the moon round. Moon. Moon cards will be required to open the gates. <laughs> oh yeah, sun. So as far as the safes, there's the sun, the moon, and the star. So there's gonna be three rounds, theoretically. Moon cards? Does that mean we can't use these cards anymore since they've got suns on them? Yes, indeedy. Now, you'll have to look for cards with moons on them. So, how many times do we play the AB game? I don't know. <laughs> as many times as you need to. It's anybody's guess how long it'll go. But I plan on keeping this party going until somebody opens the number nine door. So it's over when someone gets nine BP. Nope. As long as that person doesn't open the number nine door, the game goes on! Hmm. That's an interesting little tidbit of information. 
Assuming it's accurate, of course. It means that we could just sit here and keep building up BP until everyone's at 9 or 0. But, I mean, I imagine the good ending is everyone with 9, and then at that point we figure out how to open the door. Of course. You could also get stuck just below 9 BP, where every bunny just keeps going back and forth and back and forth, winning and losing points. After all, if there's no bunny with 9 BP, the door can't open. If that happens, you'll just have to continue on to round 3, and round 4, and round 5. <laughs> Round 100? Round 2000? You might even go all the way up to round 24 billion, 9 million, 4,897! <gasps> That's quite a nice number. I'm checking quickly to see if I can find any significance of it. At present, I am not, though. Uh, can't be a phone number or anything like that that I'm aware of. Interesting. Although, I really, really hope it doesn't come to that. <laughs> Hey, can I ask you something? I don't know. Can you? I'm gonna smack that bunny face of yours. There's rules about who can go into the secondary doors, right? Like, you have to have three people, exactly? Yeah, so? Well, what about the number nine door? Are the rules the same? Nope. There aren't any rules about how many people can go through that door. But I thought we just covered that in the first episode. I thought it was only one person can go through. It could be one person, or two people, or even all nine of you. Uh, <laughs> there is one thing, though, Ziggy. All that stuff about how you have to have three people to go through the secondary chromatic doors, maybe it's not 100% true. Zero! What? What do you mean? Well, you can open the door with just one or two people if you want. That's not what you told us. <laughs> well, I didn't want to make things complicated. Oh, Zero. Changing the rules, not very nice. Then explain it now. Just use the bracelets. What? How? There's a sort of scanner between the two doors. It checks to see if the right people are going through. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's scanning the people. So it's scanning the bracelets then? Ding ding ding! As long as the scanner sees the right combination of bracelets, it doesn't matter how many people there are! But wait, hold on a minute. Do these things even come off? No, yes! They do indeed. Whoa. Then, then how do I take it off? Well, there's two ways. The first is to get through the number nine door and escape. As soon as you're out, the bracelet unlocks all by itself. That's very nice. What's the second way? Hey, Zero, wake up, will ya? <laughs> What's the second way? Oh, Theo. I think you already know. What? Do you really want to get rid of that bracelet? Of course I do! Oh, well. I see. It's easy. Nothing to it, really. You. Die. That was an excellent delivery. That was, I mean, I almost got shivers off that delivery. Here's an exciting fact. Your heart creates a bunch of faint electrical impulses. You know what an electrocardiogram is, right? Technically, it's a machine that graphs the electric current flowing across the myocardium, but you probably know it as the thing in the hospital with the little light that goes beep, beep, <laughs> beep, beep. beep. Someone dies on a TV show. <laughs> anyway, the point is that you can detect the electricity that your heart makes by pumping blood. Your fancy little bracelets pick up on that. They're always watching. So, when that signal goes away... The lock on the bracelet releases, right? Yep. 
So there you go. The second way. Your heart stops. Your bracelet comes off. <sighs> Apart from that, there's no other way to get the bracelets off. I wonder if you, like, kill someone and then resuscitate them. If we could take the bracelets off that way. Huh. If you try something harebrained, like trying to break them or something, you'll be disobeying the rules. I don't think I need to remind you what happens when you do that. We all get candy. But if you're lucky, you might get to see a few of them come off during the next round. Ha <laughs> ha Oops. I guess it's not going to be very lucky for some of you, huh? <laughs> Next round. Uh, yep. What do you mean? Well, do I have to explain everything? Yes. I mean, this is the way the game works. Somebody might die during the next round of the AB game. Oh, snap. There. That's pretty clear, right? If I had to guess, I'd say it's going to be Tenmyoldi. Or Siggy. Oh, or maybe Fido. Not Fido. Or maybe everyone? Everyone would be impressive. <laughs> what? Why? Hmm. I guess I can tell you why. Anyone whose BP drops to zero gets penalized. Just like when you break the rules. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I already told you what the penalty is! You mean the needles in our bracelets are gonna activate and will die? Correct, Siggy. Full marks. So, Fi had been right. But how had she known before Zero told us? I see. Phi Sigma and I only have one BP. That means we'd have less than zero if we lost two points. I took a moment to go over everything in my head. The AB game would continue until someone opened the number nine door. There were no rules about how many people could or couldn't pass through the number nine door. That meant it was possible for everyone to escape. The secondary chromatic doors could be opened by any number of people so long as you had the right bracelets. The bracelets would only unlock under two conditions, if you left the building or if your heart stopped. If your BP hit zero, the needles in your bracelet would activate, killing you. The next set of chromatic doors you'll be going through are downstairs. You already saw them, right? There should have been three. Red, blue, and green. That means that to get through, you'll need bracelets in cyan, magenta, and yellow. But wait! You've already got those bracelets! Yay! Have a look! The color's changed, hasn't it? Whoa. It did change. I'm yellow now. So am I. Me too. Hmm. Huh. So now I'm paired with Luna. It looks like the color wasn't the only thing that changed. What do you mean? Well, it looks like our groups have changed too. I was a solo last round, but now it says pair. Wait. Really? Mine still says solo. It looks like Luna and I both changed. Although I've gone from solo to pair. I'm the opposite. Mine went from pair to solo. Uh, no change here. Still a pair. I'm... I guess this must be... Magenta. <laughs> Are you two Magenta too? Uh-huh. Yeah. Quark, Clover, and I are Cyan. Okay, so... He gets to stay with Clover. I think Mr. K and I are pairs, and Miss Clover is a solo? Looks like it. When did they change? Back when the AB gates closed. 
That's interesting. Shuffling it up will definitely add a different dynamic. As soon as the gates close, your colors get all shuffled up automatically! The parent solo assignments hop around a bit too! And of course, it's t <laughs> totally random! Uh huh. No rules or anything! Now, with all of that explained, I must bid you adieu. Adieu. Sadly, we may never meet again. What? Well, there's not really anything for me to facilitate anymore. Oh no. I mean, you guys are good from here, right? I'll never see you guys again. Oh. Don't say that. Sad bunnies are sad. Did you really think I was going to cry? Oh. <laughs> oh. Wow. Suckers! As if I'd cry over you dummies! What the? You fucking dick. <laughs> you mad? Ugh. Anyway, <laughs> good luck. We mad, bro. I may be gone, but I'm always watching. Maybe I'll see you again someday. Well, that's gonna be a face in my nightmares. Have a nice tragedy. Okay, thank you. That little piece of shit. <laughs> if I could just get my hands on that little fucker, I'd squeeze him till he popped. He's a virtual being. That sounds gross. I don't really want to think about that. Um, so... What happens now? We've still got a while until the chromatic doors open. Yeah, looks like about 42 minutes. We should go and see if we can find any other exits. Maybe there's a vent or a disposal chute or something. If there's a chance Zero missed something. I concur. Solid reasoning. There's no point in standing around. We lose nothing by looking. And if we find nothing, we can always return and go through the chromatic doors. Let's split up. Gang. Five minutes would give us a good half hour or so. Let's meet in front of the chromatic doors five minutes before they open, then. Any objections? I have objections. I have lots of objections. Because I'm in trouble. And I got her in trouble. There were none. After some nods and mumbling, they split up and moved off to investigate. I was the only person who stayed behind. Damn. How the hell did I end up here? Why? Why me? Can I get flashbacks? No. Try as I might, I couldn't think of anything I'd done that could have landed me in Zero's game. I hadn't pissed anyone off, at least not this bad, I didn't owe anybody money, and my family certainly wasn't rich. If anyone was hoping to get a fat ransom payout from me, they were going to be very disappointed. Obviously, I wasn't some kind of genius, nor was I an Olympic athlete, and I certainly hadn't been chosen by God to fulfill some great purpose on his earth. That we know of. Well, at least if I was, I didn't know it yet. <laughs> wow, way to go, game. And way to go me, giving myself a pat on the back. back. <laughs> Had I started a fight with a frightening and mysterious new religion? <laughs> no. Had I hacked into some terrorist group's server? No. Had I witnessed an assassination? No. Had I gotten wasted and had a one-night stand with the mistress of a prominent politician? Maybe. <laughs> well, yes. But it was just the one time. <laughs> and she was the one who went after me. Anyway, I was just an ordinary college student. I like this game. The writing feels so much more in-depth than in uh, 
the original 999. If there was a reason I'd been abducted and put in the nonary game, I sure couldn't see it. Why was this happening to me? I thought back to what I'd been doing right before I was taken. The memories were still a little blurry, but they were there. Flashback? Flashback! Away to the flashback. Maybe. Ah. Nice car. December 25th, 2028. Early morning. California desert. The moon was beautiful. i just finished writing a paper due that day and was heading to my car from the research building. The parking lot was empty and a bright moon cast sharp shadows across the chilly pavement. The last time I'd looked at the clock, it had said it was two in the morning, which meant that today was Christmas Day. So why was I at school, typing away feverishly on Christmas? There were three reasons. First, my home computer had suddenly decided to eat shit. <laughs> this is a great video to come after the one where I had technical difficulties. When I hit the power button, I just got nothing. I didn't have the time to spend all night troubleshooting the stupid thing, so I headed back to campus to use one of the school machines. Second, the professor in charge of my research group was a Buddhist. Christmas didn't appear to have any sort of significance to him, and part of me couldn't shake the thought that he was trying to make some kind of point, because that's what Buddhists do, is make points. Third, my girlfriend had broken up with me a week before. Oh. Poor guy. I'm sorry. I don't think we should see each other anymore. Goodbye. All I got was that one cold email. Try as I might, I couldn't even get in touch with her. Wow. She ghosted. Or got, you know, forced to break up with him due to some sinister conspiracy to make sure that you got to the university grounds on Christmas Eve so you could write a paper because your computer ate shit. Or he just got ghosted. One of the two. Of course, that meant I wouldn't be attending the party we'd been planning on going to. Somehow, I didn't think drinking by myself around a bunch of happy couples would really be a good idea. At any rate, I'd stayed up all night to finish my paper and emailed it off to my professor before the sun began to rise. As I walked across the parking lot, I felt light. Perhaps it was the relief of finishing my paper, or perhaps it was the five energy drinks I'd chugged to stay awake. Perhaps it was both. Dude, dude, you're gonna have a heart attack. You don't do five energy drinks. You do two, maybe three. Don't do that, kids. I slid into my car and stuck the key into the ignition after only two tries. I twisted the key. Nothing happened. Huh? I jiggled the key in the slot and tried again. And again. And again, in a bit. Okay, so let's see. Don't know what that is offhand. That's an anarchy symbol. That, is that a grenade? Green Day, maybe? I don't know. Anyway, and again. On the fifth try, the engine made an odd creaking noise, like metal on metal, and fell silent. That's not a happy sound. God damn it! You stupid piece of shit! I screamed and pounded on the steering wheel, but nothing worked. The console was about to get a visit from my fist when... Huh? Okay, we can see more here. Um... XY? KY, which would be rather dirty. Uh... Who wears this? Is this a jumpsuit? This, well, I guess 2025. Futuristic stuff. Sure. Let's see. Bad. Don't know. X. X-Men. Could be. I'm just gonna let it run for a bit. Let him suffocate in way too much anesthetic smoke. Hmm. Ba da ba ba. Da 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 da. Oh, hold it. Gonna take a drink. Okay, Siggy, you dead yet? No? Okay. What? what What the hell is this? Why is my car smoking? Don't they know this is a non-smoking section? 
I clawed at the door, and for a moment I thought that it was just my panic and lack of sleep that were keeping me from opening it. It wasn't long before I realized the truth. Shit! Open, goddammit! What was going on? My mind was racing, trying desperately to puzzle out what was happening through a haze of fear and caffeine-fueled neuron misfires. That was when I saw it. Just a glimpse in the rearview mirror, but I was certain there was someone behind my car. I spun around as fast as a very tired college student sitting in a car can. Hey, who, Who's there? My vision started to swim as the smoke filled the car. The more of it I inhaled, the heavier my body felt, and I could already feel the world starting to go dark. The last of my strength failed, and I collapsed sideways into the passenger seat. My eyes slowly drooped closed. When they opened again, I was in the A-B room with Phi. Ah, oh, the music is back. Why is this happening to me? I spent a few minutes wallowing in misery. I figured I deserved at least a little self-pity. But even I knew that brooding and whining wasn't going to get me anywhere. Like Kay had said, we needed to at least try and find another way out. So I shook my head to clear it, stood up straight, and headed off. Hmm. Okay. So we went to the crew quarters. I don't seem to recall there being much in the way there that looked like an alternate escape. Plus, this would give me a chance to check out some of the other places. Um, I'd imagine the first way to have a kind of extra exit would be the lounge, although I'm certain we're not going to find an extra exit, but let's go to the lounge. We need little Pac-Man sounds. Hello, lounge. Lounge. It's a really fun word to say. Hi. Um, hey, Sigma. Hi, Fi. You still mad at me? Can I get you a seat? No, but how about a drink? <laughs> Are you some kind of waitress? What do you want? I am surrounded by the women folk. What do you mean, what do I want? I just came here to check up on you guys. Ooh, a safe. So, this is a lounge, huh? A bar, a sofa, and three ladies. I feel like I'm in the VIP room. <laughs> you don't say that out loud, Sigma. Can I get you a drink? <laughs> well, at least this is a legit smile. You better not be underage. I turned 21 just the other day. Oh. Okay. I see. Then why does your face still look six? Well, I guess we could probably have a drink or two then. Unfortunately, as much fun as that sounds like, I don't think it's a very good idea. Why not? This isn't really a good time to be getting wasted. Really? <laughs> Actually, I got a side with Clover. This is the perfect time to get wasted. It seems like this sort of thing is exactly what makes people want to drink in the first place. See, Clover and I, we know what's going on. Hmm. You've got a point. Sigma? I'm just kidding. Besides, I've got a headache. Drinking is probably not the best plan. It hasn't gone away yet? Well, it was fine for a while, but now I guess the bastard's back. Are you alright? No! Yeah, I'm sure if I just leave it alone, it'll go away in a bit. That's how it went before, anyway. Has this been happening to anyone else? What? The headaches? Uh-huh. Now that you mention it, yeah, I did get one a bit ago. I feel fine now, though. What about you, Luna? Um, you know, I think I did have a bit of a headache earlier. 
not me. No headaches here. Hmm. Well... <laughs> well what? It's hard to explain. I just feel kind of weird. Your head feels weird? <laughs> no. My body feels weird. Like my whole body. Do you feel kind of numb? I think I've got the same thing. It's kind of like... Hmm. Like when you fall asleep on top of one of your arms. And then when you wake up, that arm kind of feels like it's not really yours anymore. It's not just my arm, though. My whole body feels kind of numb and foreign. Hmm. I don't know. I guess it's kind of like that, but... Oh, if that's what you're talking about, then yeah, I know what you mean. Really? It's kind of like my body isn't really mine. I'm sort of... floating. Like that? Yeah. Exactly. Maybe it's because of the anesthetic gas. The what now? It might have looked like white smoke. The stuff they used when they abducted you. Oh, yeah. Right. Let's watch it again! Thank you. It seems like we were unconscious for a long time, so it must have been pretty powerful stuff. You think this might be some kind of side effect? Well, it could be a side effect, or it could be that it just hasn't worn off completely yet. Hmm. Whatever. That's not important. Right now we need to figure out how to get out of here. All right, I'll go have a look somewhere else then. You guys going to stick around here? Yeah. Haven't really taken a good look at everything yet. Okay. I mean, I had time to have a full flashback, feel self-pity, but if you guys haven't had a chance to even look at anything, I completely understand. Catch you later, then. I waved goodbye and headed toward the exit. Where to next? To the infirmary! When I have to beat the lounge, I'm totally gonna look at the letters that they had on the wall. Hello, infirmary. Infirmary. Nope, lounge is better. Hmm. So, you betrayed me. I hate you. This is the infirmary, huh? Oh, Sigma. Alice. What's up with your face? You look like you just saw a roach. <laughs> Are you still angry? Yes. Of course! I'm teetering on the brink of the abyss thanks to you. I didn't have a choice. Yeah, you did. I'm just trying to get out of here like we all are. And that's enough to justify screwing someone else over? That's not what I meant and you know it. If I'd known for sure that you were going to choose Ally, then I would have chosen Ally too. <laughs> Easy for you to say that now. What? Am I such a horrible person for wanting to get out of here? Yes, yes you are. Meanie. I have to get out of here. There's so many things I still want to do. Like what? <laughs> Find a shirt. Well, let's see. I want to wear lots of gorgeous clothes. I want to eat tons of delicious food and fall in love. What an idiot. <laughs> Excuse me? And I was going to take your side, but after that load of horse shit, you're on your own. Oh, wow. Ugh. Look. Let me try this again. I'm... frustrated. But there really is something important I have to do. Which is? Come on, tell me. And don't think putting up your uh, chest on a shelf is going to distract me. Avenge my father's murder. What? What? Okay, hold it, hold it. Have to rewrite my own headcanon here. Alright, so... In that case, assuming they're not going with the line that Alice is the old Egyptian priestess, because avenging her father's murder would be rather... Unnecessary at this point. Uh, 
Unless she's calling whoever freed her from the ice her father. Hmm. Okay. Continuing on, but that makes me go, huh? That's what I have to do. What happened to him? Could you elaborate on that? No, I couldn't. Oh. This isn't the kind of thing I should be telling people I don't even know. Fine. Just tell me one thing. Does your father's murder have anything to do with us being trapped here? I have no idea. As to why you're here, your guess is as good as mine. But it's possible that his death is connected to my abduction. Meaning? I was on their trail. I was tracking down the people who killed him. How close were you? I can't say. But it's possible that I was getting close enough that they decided something had to be done with me. Are you a detective? Well, I wouldn't really say I'm a detective. Not a bad guess, though. <laughs> Why are you guys looking at me like that? Well, I mean, you don't really have the detective look. Thank you, finally they're gonna mention stuff. I didn't say I was a detective. Then what are you? CIA? What? No. Fine, well, whatever you are, you don't look like one. That's fine. <laughs> In my line of work, the less I look like what I am, the better. Better I keep him guessing. Hey, what's the deal with you and Clover? What's she got to do with anything? Well, you know each other, right? I was thinking maybe you were related or worked together or something. No. She has nothing to do with my work. She's just a friend that I met somewhere. <laughs> Where's somewhere? In the middle of a desert. Okay, so it is the same Alice. At least, theoretically. A desert? Yes. But that's an awfully long story. Tell us the story! Wait, hold on. Why am I the only person getting the third degree? That doesn't seem fair to me. How about you guys give up a little personal information, too? Err... Uh, we'll start with you, Tenmyoji. Who are you? I'm Tenmyoji. I'm Sancho. Just a garbage collector. Hmm. Any ties to Zero? None. He dresses pretty nice for a garbage collector. What's your relationship with Quark? Err... Uh, you two know each other, right? Do I have to answer that? Yes. Well, if you really don't want to, it's not like I can force you. No. Oh, then I apologize, but I don't have anything to say about that subject. I mean, it's not like you told us everything either. I see. Very well, then. Dio, it's your turn. What's your profession? Circus performer? Well, you're probably gonna think I'm full of shit, but... I'm a circus ringleader. Yes! Called it. Now why aren't you played by Hugh Jackman? A ringleader? You're kidding. Look at the outfit, man. Nope. I'm the real deal. I lead a company of about 50 people. We travel all over the world. It was my grandfather's grandfather who founded it, but... My father died at a young age. I'm a fifth generation ringleader. My old man was a trapeze artist. He tried to do this quadruple flip and missed. Ooh. Well, I guess he wasn't really young. He was about 40. Still, he was pretty reckless for a guy that age. Always talking about how he couldn't let the kids show him up. Guess he just took it too far. I see. You lost your father too, then. Yeah. Death to everyone's father. But not literally. I'm not advocating that. I'm just... Shit. Yeah. Guess I got a little sappy there. Anyway, point is, I don't have any damn idea how I'm connected to Zero. I got grabbed on the last night of one of our tour stops. I'd gone out to a couple bars and gotten shit-faced. On my way back to the caravan, this black van pulls up. Somebody grabs me and throws me inside. Before I can even get a look at him, they hit me with that gas and I'm out like a light. Next thing I know, I'm waking up in the AB room. Alice is the one with headaches in this game. 
Anyway, enough about me. You still haven't heard your story, Sigma. Who are you? I told you guys the first time we met. Don't you remember? I was on my way home from school, and when I got into my car, this white gas started pouring out of everywhere. Are you some kind of doctor? No. Huh? No, I'm still working on my degree. I'm shooting for a PhD, but I'm not quite there yet. I guess you've been working on that for quite a while, huh? <laughs> yeah, I guess I have. Can you think of anything that might connect you to any of this? Believe me, I've thought about it, but I just keep drawing a blank. What about Zero? No idea. Do any of the people here look familiar to you? Well, they look familiar to me, but... Nope. You're all strangers. Well, I guess I can't really say for sure about Kay, since I haven't seen his face. I suppose it's possible he's someone I know. Just who is he, anyway? He's Spartabot. Until that amnesia clears up, I don't think we've got any way of knowing. Oh, come on. You know he's full of shit. You still don't believe him? Of course not. Okay, well, K is a bit of a mystery, but what about some of the others? Clover, for instance. What does she do? I think she's a student. At night, she's a waitress or a bartender or something. Oh, okay. That explains why she could get me a drink. And the outfit. I'll grant that. That makes sense. Hmm. What about Quark? Well, I guess he probably doesn't really have a job, huh? He's still in elementary school, right? <laughs> Why is that funny? It's nothing. Just forget about it. Ted Mioji! Yeah, you're right. Boy his age would be in elementary school. Except he's not. You really don't know much, do you? About Quark, I mean. And if it makes you feel better, sure. <laughs> Well, I know a little about Luna. I got her talking when we were in the infirmary. She says she's got some sort of medical license or something. She's a nurse? Could that be a Nightingale? Do a Florence Nightingale type thing? It could mean she's a doctor. I don't know. She didn't say. Just going by how she looks, though, I'd guess nurse. <laughs> uh. Hmm. Hmm. That leaves us with Phi. She's the most mysterious to me. True. What does a girl like that do? You've been around her the most, Sigma. She told you anything? Hmm. Look, I just don't know, alright? It's just kind of... there. Like, I looked at you, and some part of my brain just said, that's Sigma. No, nothing in particular. You sure? Yeah. She's a real mystery, all right. I honestly know about as much as you do. So, basically nothing. I hadn't really realized it until I said it. I'd spent hours with Phi, and yet I knew nothing about her except her name, and I only had her word that even that was the truth. Who was she, really? The more I thought about it, the more suspicious she seemed. A fake detective? A waitress? A garbage collector? An elementary school kid? A nurse? And a circus ringleader? Plus two total mysteries. What do we all have in common? I don't think Zero would just grab a bunch of people randomly. Why not? <sighs> hmm. There's no point to talking about this. We should just focus on getting out of here. Yeah, I agree. I'm gonna go check on the others, then. Where do you plan on going? Uh... To the crew quarters, I guess. I think I'll head to the crew quarters. I see. Right. Later, bro. See ya, dude. Okay. I headed out of the infirmary. Crew quarters. Crew quarters.
quarters. Nope. Lounge. Still the best one. Hello. Oh, Sigma. Sup. Perfect timing. Thank you. You were in the crew quarters before, weren't you? Yup. <laughs> yeah, I was. Phi, Alice, and I went through all the rooms. Did you find anything suspicious? Well, lots of things, but nothing with a way out. Like a secret door or something? New. No. If I had, you really think I wouldn't have told you? Anything else out of the ordinary, perhaps? Out of the ordinary? Hmm. What's this book? Huh? Oh, that's a book of meowed cats. <laughs> a meowed? Oh, sorry. It's just this thing that happens to me every ever since I was a kid. Whenever I start talking about cats, I start talking like one. It doesn't really mean anything, though. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I love the shocked face. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. So what's the cat book about? Oh, um, well, there's this quantum physics thought experiment called Schrodinger's Cat. This book talks about it. Oh, yes, I've heard about that. A cat is put in a box with a device that has a random chance to release a poison which will kill the cat. That means the cat is both alive and dead until someone opens the box. Something like that, right? Meowby? What? I don't really know anything about it. I'm just telling you what Phi told me. So it probably isn't going to give us any hints then. Ha <laughs> ha, way to go, Cork. Quark, you're doing it too. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Don't make fun of Sigma. Well, what about you guys? What do you mean? You checked out the lounge with Clover and Tenmyoji, and Quark was in the infirmary with Theo and Luna. Anything suspicious there? Well, this whole facility is pretty suspicious, but I suppose that's not what you meant. Hmm. Well, the puzzles in the lounge were Lunar Eclipse themed. Hmm. Scribble, 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 note, scribble, scribble. Lunar Eclipse? Yes. Apparently, there's supposed to be a lunar eclipse on December 31st, 2028. Oh. All the puzzles were related to that somehow. Isn't that this New Year's Eve? I suppose it is. Well, I can't say I know what year, or even what day it is, but... Clover was saying something to that effect. Hmm. Interesting. The 31st, huh? I'd been knocked over, knocked out at dawn on the 25th, so the 31st would be six days after that. Lunar Eclipse. Lunar Eclipse. What did it have to do with any of this? Try as I might, I couldn't think of any way an eclipse could be connected to our abductions. What about the infirmary, Quark? Did you find anything there? Yeah, we did find something. No. Uh -huh. Just one thing, though. What was it? Theo and Luna didn't tell you? No. No. <laughs> okay. I got it right here. Just a second. Yeah. Quark reached into his pocket and pulled out what appeared to be a newspaper clipping. My throat began to tighten as I read it. Radical 6 infection spreads. Cure continues to elude authorities. The Radical 6 virus continues to spread across the globe like wildfire. The WHO, that's the World Health Organization for everyone else, has confirmed that the death toll is estimated to have passed 100,000 victims. Immediate quarantine of any infected patients is strongly advised. Hmm. Is this for real? It seems a little hard to believe. If it really is some kind of pandemic, though, that sounds like a pretty big deal. Yes, it does. There hasn't been anything on the news, though. This is the first time I've even heard the term Radical Six. If it is true, then I worry about what might be happening to the world outside. Is there a pandemic raging on the other side of these walls? Hmm. <laughs> Duck and cover, Quark. Clover's voice shattered the silence. You guys! What? Hurry! You need to come with us!
with me. Okay. Has something happened? Yes! I mean, sort of. <laughs> I mean, we found something. Ooh. What did you find? Well, let's let her show us. It's horrible. Oh. It's really scary. Manos, hands of fate? Horrible? Oh, never mind! <laughs> Just shut up and follow me. <laughs> You'll understand when you see it. At least she's not smiling now. Where is it? It's right over here in the next room. Just follow me. Okay. Clover was first into the room, followed quickly by me, Kay, and Quark. She said nothing, just pointed under the bed. The three of us crouched down and followed her finger. There it was. Oh, snap! <laughs> what the hell is this? I, I think it's a, a bomb. Is that a particle of antimatter held in a magnetic suspension? That would be bad news. That would be very bad news. But bomb No way. So, thank you, Sigma. You're welcome. Goodbye. Bye. Okay, that looks like the moon, though. Of course! It was the same bomb I'd seen in my vision. Then it hadn't been a hallucination. Had it actually been a premonition? We need to tell everybody! No, it's alright. <laughs> Luna's out rounding them up. Okay. They should be here in just a few seconds. See? Where is it? Where's this bomb? <laughs> no sooner had she spoken the words than the rest of our fellow captives appeared. Luna pushed through them and pointed at the bomb. There. You see? For several long moments, we just stared in silence. Slowly, we began to eye one another. Old suspicion suddenly reawakened. It was Phi who finally broke the silence. Doesn't look like it has a timed detonator. There must be a remote somewhere. You're right. It'll probably use an active button or a switch of some sort, not a dead man switch. If we can get it, we should be safe as long as we don't press the button. Hmm. Who was the first person to find this? Me. And... and Luna. <laughs> we found it while we were searching this room. But why are you searching this room? I thought you and Luna were in the lounge. Well, yeah. <laughs> we looked all over, but we couldn't find anything there. So we gave up on the lounge and came here. I can confirm that. Okay, well that's nice of you. I wanted to look around the lounge some more, so I stayed back. You guys must have found it when you got here then? Yes. How did you know it was a bomb? Well, I mean, I could tell just by looking at it. Really? Why? Well, during my train. Whoa! Clover! Clover's eyes widened and she clapped her hands over her mouth. Anyway, Ugh. this is definitely a bomb. I guarantee it. <laughs> just like we're gonna like the way we look? How do you know? I just do, okay? You sounded pretty sure about the switch, too. How do you know all this? Let's just say it's an occupational hazard. <laughs> what kind of occupation do you have? I can't tell you that. Spare me the bullshit. <laughs> this isn't time for keeping secrets. Please. Just trust me. These lips are sealed. Look, I know I'm repeating myself, but I'm sure that's a bomb. And it's not just any kind of bomb. It's an antimatter bomb. Woo! Points for Daydon. Antimatter? What? Wait, you mean a bomb that uses annihilation energy? Oh, you know what that is? Anyway, yes, you're right. Uh, what's Annie Hill Nation? <laughs> Sounds like my band. <laughs> <laughs> I would have thought you'd know. Huh? Why? Well, your name is Quark. Fair enough. 
You do know what that means, right? Yeah. Grandpa told me about it. He said it's an elementary particle, one of the smallest bits of matter, but I don't really know anything else. <laughs> I see. Can you explain it to him, Tenmyoji? Me? Well, you know him best. I thought you could explain it best. Uh, let me think. Um, I don't know. It's hard to think of a way to explain it in simple terms. <laughs> you want me to do it? Yes, please. Fai nodded and turned to Quark. Okay. To begin with, we usually refer to bits of matter as particles, but there are also these things called antiparticles. For example, an electron is a particle with a negative charge. It has a sort of opposite, which is the antiparticle called the positron. It has a positive charge instead of a negative one, like the electron. So, protons have antiprotons and neutrons have antineutrons. Antimatter is a general term that covers all the antiparticles. The thing that's interesting about antimatter is that because it's the opposite of normal matter, when they collide, they both sort of cancel each other out. When they cancel each other out, though, it releases a whole bunch of energy. That process is called annihilation. So, an antimatter bomb is a bomb that uses annihilation energy. Solid? I give it a solid 8 out of 10 on the description. Um, sorry. Tip. I don't really get it. Oh. Alright, how about this? <laughs> You've got men and women, right? They're kind of like complete opposites. What happens when you put them together? Um, <laughs> well, if there were, uh, quantum men and women, then when you put them together, they disappear. Because their opposite elements cancel each other out. Like when a plus cancels out a minus, you get zero. That's annihilation. But when you get annihilation, you also get... I know! A baby! <laughs> <laughs> exactly. In this case, the baby you get is the energy from the annihilation. It's not a real baby, of course, but like a baby, it's got all sorts of potential to do amazing things. That's kind of a strange explanation. You followed it, though, right? Yeah! <laughs> yeah, but that thing under the bed isn't going to be making a baby. Just how big of a... Uh, just how big of an explosion are we going to get here? It's pretty simple, actually. Just use Einstein's E equals MC squared. Yep. <laughs> Good attempt at writing it in text. The mass lost during annihilation will be converted to energy, so... So you would take the total mass of matter and antimatter and multiply it by the speed of light squared. That should get you the amount of energy. 299792458 meters per second. Thank you, Mr. Haas. For example, let's say that it has 350 milligrams of antimatter. That would mean there would also be 350 milligrams of matter, right? So you'd have 700 milligrams total. Yes. That means annihilation would produce roughly 63 trillion joules. That's some fast math. 63 trillion joules? That's about as much energy as the Hiroshima bomb. What the... You've gotta be kidding me. But there's only 350 milligrams of stuff in there. Well, technically it's 700 milligrams since you have the matter and the antimatter. That's not the point! <laughs> We're talking about something that weighs less than a gram being equal to a bomb that weighed like 10,000 pounds! Don't get so excited. I think I know what kind of bomb this is. It's probably using antihydrogen. There should only be about 25 micrograms of material in there. Oh, that's nice. That's less than a thousandth of a gram. So you'd only get about 45 billion joules of energy, right? How are they throwing this math out so fast? What does that mean? About as much explosive power as one ton of TNT. A ton? Yes. Well, approximately. <laughs> and how exactly should I not worry about that? That's enough to blow up a ten-story building! True. But it's a lot less powerful than an atomic bomb. Why do all these people know these conversions so quickly? One ton of TNT, ten-story building. We don't know how big this place is. 
If we can get far enough away from the bomb, we might have a chance of survival. Perhaps, but how do we know this is the only bomb? What do you mean? Look at it carefully. It's got a number three. Do you see it? Yeah, you're right. If the bombs are numbered... Then there could be a number two bomb. Or a number one bomb out there, huh? Yes. There's no way to know if this is the final bomb, either. There could be a fourth, or a fifth, or... E Ooh. Hmm. Uh. 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 Hmm. Anyway, we can't just sit here and do nothing. We should move it. Move it, move Somewhere. it. Somewhere. Dio, step forward and reach for the bomb. No! Don't touch it! Yeah, do not touch the bomb. Alice grabbed Dio by the wrists and jerked him away from the bed. What the hell do you think you're doing? Have you got a death wish or something? Yes, I mean, he's a circus ringleader. This bomb is here because somebody planted it. Do you really think they didn't rig it to go off if some idiot tried to move it? Well, then what the fuck are we supposed to do? We'll just have to leave it be for now. <laughs> until we can find the detonator or figure out how to turn it off. Then you're telling us we should just prance off and ignore the incredibly deadly bomb that is probably going to kill us all? I'm down for a good prance. There's not much else we can do. Do you know how to turn it off? Uh. Well, there is a way. Then spill the beans, lady. <laughs> how do we turn the damn thing off? There should be an emergency deactivation password. If you enter that password, the device should, well, deactivate. So we just need to get this password? Yes, that's right. But there's no keyboard or anything on the bomb. Look again. You see it? Right here. There's a port. If we can find the password input device, we just connect it here. Then we can enter the password. Who would do something like this? I have no idea. But we can figure out when they did it. Oh yeah? When you and I searched this room, we didn't find anything, right? So that means the bomb must have been planted after we'd left. After we left, huh? But when we went and checked the chromatic doors, we were all there. And after that, we've all been around other people. There's no way anyone could have snuck off to plant it. I don't know about that. After we finished the A-B game, we all split up. But if someone planted it right before then... What do you mean? Oh, yeah. You don't know, do you? Before we went off to the three rooms, we searched the hallway. Everybody was all split up. Huh. Yeah, anyone could have come by here then. It would have been easy to sneak away. You know, I don't remember seeing you around, Sigma. <laughs> what were you doing? I was feeling sorry for myself. Huh, well, I was, uh... I was just kind of deep in thought, I guess. I stayed behind in the warehouse when you guys went off. Hmm. Uh... Huh. Err... Hmm? Hmm. Uh... Hey, why are you guys giving me that look? You don't think I planted it, do you? I never said that. <laughs> Not out loud, you didn't. You've got to be kidding me. I don't know anything about this bomb. Really? Are you sure? Back when we were in the AB room, you said you saw the moment when the bomb exploded. Th that was, um, just a... I could hardly say premonition. If they didn't think it was the worst lie on the planet, they'd think I was insane. Like her. Oh. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. There we go. This doesn't make any sense. According to Temyoji, any one of us could have been in here. Why am I the only one who's under suspicion? Also, also, there's no way to know the culprit here is actually one of us. Maybe there's someone else in here, and they set up the... Impossible. 
There's no Why? way that would get past Zero. But someone set up us the bomb. And there's no way Zero would let anybody do something that would get in the way of the gang going forward. Unless it's the person who programmed Zero. Um... What? When you say Zero, you mean the AI, right? Of course. This is confusing. <laughs> From now on, let's refer to the real Zero, the one behind all of this, as Zero Senior. <laughs> which would, of course, make the AI Zero Junior. Okay. Fine with me. Anyway, whichever one it is, they're not going to let a tenth person in. There's no way. But what if the tenth person is Zero Senior? I don't think it could be. Why not? Well, Zero Junior said so. So? He said that the real Zero was one of us. No. He implied it. Fi and Clover were right. There couldn't be a tenth guest. And Zero Senior was, without a doubt, one of us. Says who? But if that was the case, then could Zero Senior have planted the bomb? If not, then who had? Alice? Dio? Luna? Kay? Clover? I mean, Kay is the only one who might have, you know, storage capacity for it. Ten Miyoji? Phi? Or... It seemed insane, but could it have been Quark? With his cinder blocks? No. Why would Zero Senior have gone through all the trouble of setting a bomb? To make this game more exciting? To make it seem more dangerous? No. It didn't fit at all. But if that was the case, then the person who planted the bomb was someone other than Zero Senior. Oh, oh no! This is bad! What is it? Press the buttons on your bracelet! Oh shit! Is this for real? We've only got four minutes until the chromatic doors open! Let's go then. You're right. This bomb thing is gonna have to wait until later. Alright, come on everybody. Doors have opened. We need to figure out who's going where and fast. Um, so our options this time are, uh... We don't have time to wait for you to figure it out. <laughs> Just pay attention. I'm only gonna say this once. Phi laid out our options. Option A. Luna and I, yellow, pair up with Clover, Cyan, to open the green door. Tenmyoji and Dio, magenta, Pair up with Alice, yellow, to open the red door. Kay and Quark, cyan, pair up with Phi, magenta, to open the blue door. Option B. Luna and I, yellow, pair up with Phi, magenta, to open the red door. Tenmyoji and Dio, magenta, pair up with Clover, cyan, to open the blue door. Kay and Quark, cyan, pair up with Alice, yellow, to open the green door. Option C. Luna and I, yellow, pair up with Alice, yellow, to open the blue door. Tenmyoji and Dio, magenta, pair up with Phi, magenta, to open the green door. K and Quark, cyan, pair up with Clover, cyan, to open the red door. Three minutes remain until chromatic doors close. <laughs> Okay, how are we going to do this? We need a system here, or we'll never have time to argue it out. Why don't we let the people who are at the most disadvantage right now decide? 
The most what? The people who only have one BP. Oh, so that would be me, you, and Ten Miyoji. No way! I refuse! Well then, what would you suggest? We'll be fair and take a vote. A vote? So we all just, like, raise our hands for the option we want? Exactly. So which one do you want, Alice? Option C. I want to go with Sigma and Luna. Hmm. Where am I? Sigma, Luna, Alice. Yeah, you want to be able to betray me again. Because you know that both of, both of us voted for Ally. Tough. Pick something else. My, my. Looks like you're not so fond of me anymore. Do you agree with him, Luna? I'll just let Sigma decide. <laughs> Fine. I'd like option C, too. Clover and I were a pair for the first round. So I feel that I can trust her. What about you, Quark? That's fine with me. So that's three votes for option C, counting mine. How about the rest of you? I'd like to pair up with Sigma and Luna, too. So option B, then. Hi, Sigma and Luna. Because you want to betray us. You just want us because we're all betraying, or we're all trusting people. So option B, then. I'd like to go with Phi. You good with that, Luna? Um, sure. I really don't mind. So we've got three votes for option B. I'd like to go with option A. Which would be... with... Clover. Sheesh, no matter what, we end up getting betrayed. You want to pair up with Alice? You're a strange duck. <laughs> How about you, Tenmyoji? I don't mind going with option A. One minute remains until chromatic doors close. So two votes for A and three votes for B and C. If Clover's vote doesn't decide this thing, we're gonna have to figure something else out. Which one do you want, Clover? I... um... I wanna go with option C. Oh, damn. Quark chose Ally in the first round, and I was with Kay in the first round. Then that's what we're doing. Option C had won four votes. We were almost out of time, and I didn't exactly have a convincing argument. I was going to have to go with the majority. Ten seconds remain until chromatic doors close. Nine. Eight. Seven. The doors are closing. Let's go! Come on, Luna, hurry up. We've got to get to the blue door. Right. Luna, Alice, and I dashed toward the blue door. I looked over my shoulder in time to see the others disappearing into their doors. Clover, Quark, and Kay had ended up with the red door. And Phi, Dio, and Tenmyoji had gone to the green door. Two, one, zero. Chromatic doors closing. Floor B. That's a complex floor. Huh? There's three doors here. It looks like they're all locked, though. Does that mean this is just a dead end? Well, there's a weird lever thing over here. Try pulling it. How about you try pulling it? Hey, what's with all this hostility? Are you still mad about the last AB game? Yes. Of course I am. Please don't fight. We need to work together, or we're really going to be in trouble. Please? Uh. Hmm. Very well. I'll pull the lever then. Is that okay? Yeah, go right ahead. See if I care. <laughs> one of the doors opened. But only one. I wonder how you open the other ones. Who cares? We should get moving. Ooh. 
This is pretty. <laughs> w what is this place? Don't tell me we somehow managed to get outside. I doubt it. Look up. There's a ceiling up there. Yeah, I remember the door said Bee Garden or something. What's a Bee Garden? It probably stands for something. Maybe beautiful? Huh. Huh. This feels like a whole other little world. Like an oasis in the middle of all this metal. I feel kind of weird saying this, considering where we are, but this place feels so liberating. All of this green. It's wonderful. It's huge, though. We'll wear ourselves ragged trying to search the whole thing. This must be the exit. Damn. Well, so much for this being easy. It's locked. We should split up and look around. Agreed. Well, let's get to it, then. Seek a way out. Alright, this seems like a good place to wrap it up. It's been a little over an hour, and this way we can start off ne next episode with Pure on Puzzle Solving. So, as always, this is a blind let's play, so if you have anything spoilerific you want to put in the comments, please use ROT13. Um, feel free to like and subscribe if you feel like you like it and you wish to subscribe. Let me know in the comments below if I'm doing things right, you like what you're seeing, or if you have any suggestions on how I could uh, make this video series any better. I don't believe there's anything else. Like I said, I'm going to try to crank these out a little bit faster just to kind of catch up to where I would normally have been if it weren't for the technical difficulties. We'll see how that turns out, see how my throat holds up. If I get the cough back, I'll obviously not be able to do that. So. Until next time, thank you all for watching. Date on out. <laughs>